And now, 1160 AM KBDT proudly presents Life Solutions, Coaching, Counseling, Naturopathic Medicine, Insights for Successful Living, and Getting Better with Ann Beal. Welcome to our show today. This is Getting Better with Ann Beal. I'm Ann Beal, and my co-host today is Dr. Jim Slaughter. Hey, everybody. Good to be with you today. We are here for a very important, important subject today. We want to talk about truth. We are concerned. We have clinics, um, mental health clinics, and so we are concerned. But we also want to talk about a lot of other medical people that are concerned. There are two doctors in Bakersfield. They have 40 years of immunology and virology experience between them. They have clinics all the way from Fresno, California, down to San Diego. And they had a press conference last week and gave all their data and all the statistics for California and all over the U.S. Um, basically, they were citing their urge that we need to reopen. They were concerned about it, people's immune systems. And they have actually administered 5,000 coronavirus tests. And they say that it is, um, that coronavirus is similar to the flu and doesn't warrant, now that we have all the data, all these shutdowns and they're very concerned so we want to play you some of their press conference uh, just so you can hear them talk about the data and then we will discuss it as well and it's very enlightening and i would really urge you to go back and hear it when you can it's tv 23 abc in um california you can look that up to watch that so we're going to do snippets here we go dr arison and dr masihi masihi effects to COVID that aren't being talked about and so we'd like to kind of look at how the how we've responded as a nation and why we responded our first initial response two months ago was a little bit of fear we decided to shut down travel uh, to and from China these are good ideas when you don't have any facts we decided to keep people at home and isolate them even though everything we've studied about quarantine typically you quarantine the sick when someone has measles, you quarantine them. We've never seen where we quarantine the healthy, where you take those without disease and without symptoms and lock them in your home. So some of these things, um, from what we've studied from immunology and microbiology, aren't really meshing with what we know as people of scientific minds that read this stuff every day. So that's kind of how we started. We don't know what's going on. We see this new virus. How should we respond? So we did that initially. And over the last couple of months, we've gained a lot of data. Uh, typically in Kern County, for instance, our, we've tested 5,213 people, and we have 340 positive COVID cases. Well, that's 6.5% of the population, which would indicate that there is a widespread viral infection, similar to flu. We, we think it's, it's kind of ubiquitous throughout California. We're going to go over those numbers a little bit to kind of help you see how widespread COVID is and see how we should be responding to it based on its, its prevalence uh, throughout society or its, the existence of the cases that we already know about. So if we look at California, these numbers are from yesterday. We have 33,865 COVID cases out of a total of 280,900 total tested. That's 12% of Californians were positive for COVID. So we don't, the initial, as you guys know, the initial models were, were woefully inaccurate. They predicted millions of cases of death, not of, not of prevalence or incidence, but death. That is not materializing. What is materializing in the state of California is 12% positives. Well, if we, we have 39.5 million people. If we just take a basic calculation and extrapolate that out, that equates to about 4.7 million cases throughout the state of California which means this thing is widespread. That's the good news. We've seen 1,227 deaths in the state of California with a possible uh, incidence or prevalence of 4.7 million. That means you have a 0.03 chance of dying from COVID-19 in the state of California. 0.03 chance of dying from COVID in the state of California. Is that, does that necessitate sheltering in place? Does that necessitate shutting down medical systems? Does that necessitate people being out of work? <clears throat> so that's, that's California. And that's, uh, I also wanted to mention that 96% of people in California who get COVID recover. 
with almost no significant sequelae or no significant uh, continuing medical problems. So that's, that, those are important statistics for the state of California. Two months ago, we didn't know this. So I'm going to bring it to light now because we've, we're, we're sharing our own data. This isn't data filtered through someone. This is our own data. We found 6.5%, and then California has found 12%. So the more you test, the more positives you get. The, the prevalence number goes up, and the death rate stays the same. So it gets smaller and smaller and smaller. And as we move through this data, what I want you to see is millions of cases, small amount of death. Millions of cases, small amount of death. And you will see that in every state. And, if we, and since we, we're talking about following the science, we're going to follow the statistics and follow the science. So I want to look at New York State. They've been in the news a lot, right? And their, their numbers are critical. Let's go over their numbers. Cases of COVID as of yesterday, 256,272 cases in New York State. Not New York City, New York, the entire state. They did a total of 649,325 tests. That's 39% of New Yorkers tested positive for COVID-19. That's their ratios. This is public data online. You can all look it up. 39% of the people were tested. Right. Which is likely, they likely have 7.5 million cases. Yeah. Yeah. Right, so we extrapolate data. We extrapolate data, we test people, and then we extrapolate for the entire community based on the numbers. The initial models were so inaccurate, they're but not even... That, but if those additional models are based on, if we did no social distancing, right. is that correct? So is it really a fair to say, obviously they're not as bad as they were because those were based on alternative scenarios. And some of them were, were based on social distancing and still predicted hundreds of thousands of deaths which has been inaccurate. So in New York, they, the ones they tested, they found 39% positive. So if that's indicative, and they tested 649,000 people, that's a massive test. That's accurate data, 39%. So if they tested the whole state, would we indeed have 7.5 million cases? We don't know. We will never test the entire state. So we extrapolate out. We use the data we have because it's the most accurate we have versus a predictive model that have been nowhere in the ballpark of accurate. So they, how many deaths do they have? 19,410 out of 19 million people, which is a 0.1% chance of dying from COVID in the state of New York. And they have a 92% recovery rate. If you are indeed diagnosed with COVID-19, 92% of you will recover. So we're seeing millions of cases, small amount of death. Millions of cases, small amount of death. And the reason I'm making that point is because we're going to compare this to flu and say, is this significantly different from influenza A and B? And if not, why has our response been what it is? USA, this is, this is a big one for us. Um, 802,590 cases as of yesterday. We've tested over 4 million. If you guys have studied globally what's happening, that's double what any other country. Germany's at two. I, I realize their populations are lower, but the fact that we were able to ramp up and do 4 million is pretty impressive, which gives us a 19.6% positive out of those who were tested for COVID-19. So if, if, if this is a typical extrapolation, 328 million people times 19.6 is 64 million. That's a significant amount of people with COVID. It's similar to the flu. If you study the numbers in 2017 and 2018, we had 50 to 60 million with the flu. And we had, uh, we had a similar death rate. In the deaths in the United States were 43,545, similar to the flu of 2017-2018. We, we always have between 37 and 60,000 deaths in the United States every single year. No pandemic talk, no shelter in place, no shutting down of businesses, no sending doctors home. That's from the flu, by the way, just to clarify. Yeah. 37,000 Every year, per the CDC. 30. Due to flu okay. in the United States. Some years, it's even as low as 20,000 some year. In 2017, 2018, it was 45 to 50,000, depending on who you read. And we don't necessarily report all of our flu tests. We do thousands of flu tests every year. We don't report every one because the flu is ubiquitous. 
And to that note, we have a flu vaccine. How many people even get the flu vaccine? The flu is dangerous. It kills people. So just because you have a vaccine doesn't mean it's going to be everywhere. And it doesn't mean everyone's going to take it because we see every year that we have a vaccine and I would say probably 50% of the public doesn't even want it. So just... Okay, well, we will continue some clips from that, but let's talk, Dr. Slaughter, about what you heard. Well, we heard a lot, that, you know, that's yeah, for no. sure. And, I, and a lot of the material is, uh, is kind of surprising and, and uh, controversial because it's going against the mainstream that we hear on TV and that kind of thing. But I like the fact that Erickson and Masihi deal with facts they, rather than models. And boy, and, was it controversial because they dealt with the numbers. Yeah, exactly. And, and so, you know, I, I need to see that. Yeah. And as long as I'm just looking at predictions, yeah, the predictions uh, I'm not were from that. satisfied about that. And they do talk about that later. They get questioned on that about Fauci and the, the models. And he said, you know, we are on the ground. We're on the front lines. We're seeing the patients. We're counting up real statistics, real numbers. We're not using some theoretical model. And so Fauci hasn't practiced in 20 years. We are actually on the front line. And I, I think that's very interesting. But boy, this, this video, guys, this video went viral. And at 5 million, they started, news channels started picking it up. They started talking about it. And by the time it got past 5.5 million, YouTube took it down. They've now right, banned right. it. And so you can find it out there because this was a press conference in California on TV 23 ABC. And it's in Bakersfield and so California. So you can find that video. I went to TV23.com. I think that's what it was. And I found the actual press conference. And so we, you know, it's amazing that if you don't agree with the mainstream media, the big media, the big pharmaceutical vaccines, all that kind of stuff, you or who the World Health Organization, which we know is wrong all the time, you get taken down from YouTube and Facebook. And that's uh, pretty typical of mainstream media. They don't like dissent. They don't they like, like anybody dissent. disagreeing with them. No. And so when that happens, if they're powerful enough, they just delete it. Yes. And so for us, what we've been concerned about this whole time, and you've heard us talking, was by sheltering in, it lowers your immune system. And, and they go on and talk about that. And we're going to play that clip. Um, and so we're very concerned about people doing that, but also what's happening to the economy and everything. So um, when you talk about the numbers and you see it's 97% people recover, 92% people recover, 95%, they, they go on to talk about Sweden and Norway and Spain. Now, Sweden didn't lock down at all. Right. No lockdown. No Sweden. lockdown at all. Yep. And in Norway, they completely, they did, you know, lockdown, social distance, um, staying at home, all that kind of stuff. And what's interesting is there weren't that much difference at all in the numbers. No. And they're Scandinavian countries are right next to each other, you know. And uh, so they have the same environment, basically. And one isolated, the other one did not. And the numbers are the same. Yes, yeah, so one of the things that we want you to know is now based on all the statistics that are coming in, they didn't have a lot of statistics before, so they were having to go by theoretical models. Right. And what they were hearing from China, what we, you know, how much do you believe China? And so, but now that they have the numbers and now that they know the truth over the last two months, they now know there's no longer a need for sheltering in place. Now there is this media attacking saying, you know, you don't care about people and all that kind of stuff. So they're being careful coming out. But a lot of people, um, Mark Cuban, Elon Musk, a lot of people are very concerned by taking so long, people's immune system's gonna be down, but also the economy is gonna shut down. So um, when we come back, we're gonna talk more about the immunology and virology side of it. What happens to your immune system when you're closed in and keep using hand sanitizer and staying away? So they, they actually explain a lot about why your immune system breaks down by doing that and what strengthens your immune system. And Dr. Slaughter here calls it uh, Biology 101. It is, it is. It, uh, yeah, this is stuff you learn in the ninth grade biology class, you know. And, how uh, how yeah. you keep, like you, you how build you stay your well, immune system. Right. Uh -huh. Building your own immune system. Which right. is what we talk about all the time. Build your immune system with nutrients, vitamins, and fruits and vegetables. Take care of yourself. Stay right here. We'll get back to it. I wanted to, you know, maybe we don't need to, to say it, but... Uh, hey, Jerry. But the, uh, I think it's important that it's, it's good to know that uh, these two guys uh, say that what 
Dr. Fauci recommended was what he should have recommended. That's how we do it when something new comes up. <laughs> and uh, But there comes a point where you don't do that anymore. After you know the facts and you know what you're facing and what you're up against, then you, you move away from the theor theoretical model into the factual right. area and do what that calls for. Well, I just had uh, one of our listeners say they're going to unfollow me and unfriend me, that merely it was a difference of opinion about current events. But now you're going public on your program and offering dangerous advice. Well, I'm okay. offering it. You, you I'm offering dangerous such advice. such a dangerous person. Yeah. Uh, actually, what we're talking about is the inability for people to be willing to hear any kind of facts and data. And you hear data, and immediately you say it's unsafe because someone has an opinion and you don't want to hear their opinion. And so um, that's exactly what YouTube did. That, right. that they'll put terrorists on there. They'll put terrorists, listen, you know, their, their, their plans, but they'll take down people they disagree with. Right. And this listener, this person, is saying that um, they're not going to listen to it. That even if we put them on and share their data and their opinions, that we are giving dangerous advice. And that's exactly what's happened to people out there. Mm -hmm. Free speech is gone. That, that's what they're saying. Pretty much. Now, yeah. you, you can't have free speech, right? right? You can't give your opinion or they will hate you and unfriend you. Right. And right. What, what country and was that you. in? I mean, that was Germany a long time ago where you're doing right there. If you know any history about what happened with the Nazis, long that's the kind of country that they built. Mm -hmm. Number it one, is, people yeah. that tell on each other, people that report their neighbors, and they're intolerant to any other opinions. Now I'm preaching again, aren't I? Uh, yes, you are, but that's So okay. for us to build the immune system is so important. You've got to build your immune system. And as a medical person and mental health people, we're concerned about building your immune system and keeping yourself well. So if you're going to do that, you have to get outside. You have to exercise, you have to socialize in some way. And so for us, this whole thing has been, how do you stay healthy and do what they're saying? As long as they don't make it too crazy, you can still stay healthy. Right. But this well, person and, right here, this person would close off highways and what, what we've seen in Gallup, New Mexico. They'd well, close and highways. that is just uh, the weirdest phenomenon to me, how they shut down the whole town. They shut no roads in, no basically roads out. They've made Nobody it this can leave. compound where, yeah. you know, an internment camp basically there in your own city. Yeah, and, so uh, that would be socialism. They only had 19 deaths in that whole place of, of you know, however many people, millions. Less, uh, less than 1%, yes. much less than 1%. And they're not going to let them out? They say they're not going to let people in, but they have, they have all the highways closed and all the roads closed we, that they've reported to us. And so if we say that we don't think that is a good idea, he would unfriend us and quit listening to us. Well, yeah, okay. Because we're not allowed to have an opinion like that. Right. It's we're not allowed. It's, it's, so if I was on a yeah. playground when I was a kid, this person would not be my friend anymore and stay away from me because I was dangerous. Could be, perhaps, yeah. yes. Yeah, that's unfortunate um, because he can be a pretty nice guy. But um, okay, so at this point, I'm going to start with the immunology. The um, what do you call it? The uh, so we got it 13. I got to get that pulled up. Quit preaching. Okay, here we go. <laughs> And now here's more Getting Better with Ann Beal on 1160 AM KBDT. Well, on break, we were having a discussion about one of our listeners who contacted us on Facebook, where you can see us on video, Getting Better with Ann Beal on Facebook, who said that they were very sorry, but they will have to unfollow us now. And previously, we merely had a difference of opinion about current events. But now, because we're going public on our program and offering dangerous advice, that we are harming people and um, giving dangerous advice and they can't, they can't even listen to us anymore and they'll have to turn us off. That is exactly what's happening around the US and that's what we were talking about. So we're gonna move on and play this clip for, um, we hope that you can hear differences of opinion, that you can hear facts and, a doctor, and other doctor's advice if it goes against the mainstream is to listen to it and have an opinion but not have to shut it out. Um, we just really want you to be able to listen. So here we go. These two doctors are talking more about the secondary effects of COVID. Statistically insignificant in 1700, you realize. Millions of cases, small amount of deaths. 1700, 100, 
These are statistically insignificant. So you have a 0 .003 chance of death as a citizen of Norway and a 97% recovery. Their numbers are a little bit better. Does it necessitate shutdown, loss of jobs, destruction of the oil company, furloughing doctors? That's the question I have for you. I think the answer is going to be increasingly clear as we move through this data. Um, the next thing I wanted to talk about is uh, the effects of COVID-19, the secondary effects. COVID-19 is one aspect of our health sector. What has it caused to have us be involved in social isolation? What is it? What has it caused uh, that, the, that we are seeing the community respond to? Child molestation is increasing at a severe rate. We could go over multiple cases of children who have been molested due to angry family members who are intoxicated, who are home, who have no paycheck. These things last a lifetime. This isn't about a seasonal flu. These are things that will follow these people and affect them in a negative fashion for their life. And these are secondary effects from COVID. And these are for me talking to ERs, talking to my doctors, and talking to people across the country and finding out what they're seeing. Spousal abuse. We see people coming in here with black eyes and cuts on their face. It's an obvious abuse of case. These are things that will affect them for a lifetime, not for a season. Alcoholism, anxiety, depression, suicide. I talked to uh, the, the, the uh, Donnie Youngblood and various people in the community. I've asked them, how are things going? Suicide is spiking. Education has dropped off. Economic collapse. Medical industry, we're all suffering because our staff isn't here and we have no volume. These are all real things that I'm seeing every day. I don't, I don't read about this stuff. I'm seeing it in my clinics. We have clinics from Fresno to San Diego, and these things are spiking in our community. These things will affect people for a lifetime, not for a season. So let's, let's make sure we're clear on that. So we've gone over the secondary effects. We've gone over the statistics. Now I want to compare flu virus. Is this significantly different? And I just got a little bit of data here. Um, so deaths uh, per the CDC, 24,000 to 62,000 deaths each year. Um, we get about, we had uh, about 45 million total cases in 2017 with about 62,000 deaths, or a 0.13 chance of death from flu in the United States. As you know, our other numbers were 0.02. So the lethality of, of COVID-19 is much less. Now you've got hotbeds of it in New York, but again, we went over the numbers, 0.1% chance of death. Widespread, small amount of deaths. It's similar to flu, as a matter of fact. If we follow the science, as we've been asked to do, I'm following the science. This data is generated by the CDC, World Health Organization. The testing is generated by what we have done here. So we are following the science. Now I want to talk about the immune system. Uh, Dr. Masihi used to teach for immunology. We both had years of microbiology, biochemistry, and virology studies. We've made it our life's work to understand this stuff. And here, I'd like to go over some basic things about how the immune system functions so people have a good understanding. The immune system is built by exposure to antigens, viruses, bacteria. When you're a little child crawling on the ground, putting stuff in your mouth, viruses and bacteria come in, you form an antigen antibody complex, you form IgG, IgM. This is how your immune system is built. You don't take a small child, put them in bubble wrap in a room and say, go have a healthy immune system. This is immunology, microbiology 101. This is not something, this is the basis of what we've known for years. Um, so w what I'm seeing is when you take human beings and you say, go into your house, clean all your counters, why sell them down? You're gonna kill 99% of viruses and bacteria. Wear a mask, don't go outside. What does that do to our immune system? Our immune system is used to touching. We share bacteria, staphylococcal, streptococcal bacteria. Viruses, we develop an immune response daily to this stuff. When you take that away from me, my immune system drops. As I shelter in place, my immune system drops. You keep me there for months, it drops more. And now I'm at home, hand washing vigorously, washing the counters. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Okay, so um, that the, we got the point across, right? And then we'll finish it when we come back. Well, yeah. It'll be right at the end of that. Mm -hmm. um, but basically, that is very important. 
And no matter how much people don't like to hear that, I mean, there is a balance. So where is that balance? And I think that's what we're learning is what is the balance of the danger versus the other dangers. I mean, you weigh all dangers. I mean, we, we weigh a danger that if we have to walk our dog, if we have to take our dog out to the bathroom in the middle of the night, okay, it, it's, you know, no, it's dark out there. Okay, maybe we should take a flashlight. Maybe we should this. Maybe we should look around. You know, and we make a decision and we stay safe. And so that's just an example to me of when there's lots of dangers, you have to weigh them all and come up with a good decision. But early on, we didn't have that. Now we have that. Yeah, but, you know, part of the problem is that uh, there's no way we can protect ourselves or, or t totally distance ourselves from the COVID virus. There's no way. And, and so a lot of it is so irrational. We can go to church, or we can't go to church, but we can go to Home Depot. Please, what are you thinking? And also, you know, a part of that is, and we, we've learned this since then, that, you know, COVID lives for three days on plastic. Yeah, and people so go you, get you, stuff. You go, to, you go get <laughs> bottled water at the store, and you're touching it during the day, and that virus, if it's there, is still on there for well, three and, days. And, and what, and theoretically, when they talk about, when you hear doctors and, and you hear about COVID and the fact that it lives three days on plastic, that then the theory of having a grocery store open or having things open like Costco or whatever so you can go in there and get stuff and take it home, you have things at home that have COVID on them. But if you go to right. church, you're not really touching a lot of plastic. You know, you're not. So, you know, you could social distance apart. You don't really get to watch people at Costco and then they get in line. And I mean, the theories, the actual, if you're looking at sickness, okay, if you're looking at virology and immunology, it doesn't make sense per se, some of the things that we're doing. I think a lot of uh, the, the protective mechanisms that we put in place are futile. Right. But they make some people feel better because I think I'm taking more control by doing this when in reality that may be false. Yeah, thinking. because we're also driving through and getting food. Right. And so that's people touching. And if, how, you know, they say COVID doesn't live in food. Uh, that's basically what they said. But on the plastic and on the containers and all that kinds of things. So we wear plastic gloves. See that COVID lives on that. So, <laughs> you know, we're touching stuff all the time with the plastic gloves and that COVID lives three days on there. So we're, we've been looking at the whole thing from much more of a medical perspective, thinking this doesn't all make sense, but you know, we're not in control. What we're saying is listen to everything and you can come up with your own decision. Now we also got to put in all the politics and everything with that, that what happens if you, you know, they're going to attack them and anybody who opens up. So if it was the flu instead of COVID, and this was a long time ago, and we were doing this for the flu, as soon as you people get back out there, their immune systems weakened. So they're going to get, some people are going to get the flu. And then they'll, if someone dies from that, even if they had, you know, black lungs from smoking for 40 years, you know, and they had a secondary disease, if they got COVID and died from it, they would blame the politicians for that death from opening back up. I mean, that's how crazy everything's gotten. But, um, but in general, yes, it will happen again. People will get back out there and get sick. But um, so that's where the balance is. And I'm glad I'm not in charge of that balance. Mm -hmm. But we have our concerns about what happens secondary. And that's, that's where we've been so afraid seeing everything, all the rise of mental illness and anger, mental health. even anger, <clears throat> right, right. anger and all the dark depression, emotion that goes the dark along emotions with that. going up, you know. What is the Del Walmsley Radio Show? Welcome to the Del Walmsley Radio Show, where the hype ends and the help begins. I'm your host, Del Walmsley, and as always, we're working on your financial freedom. Listen to the Del Walmsley Radio Show, Monday through Friday from 11 until noon. It takes a whole lot more effort to get something started in your life than it does to keep it moving. Del Walmsley has moved thousands closer to a great life. The Del Walmsley Radio Show is now on 1160 AM KBDT, Monday through Friday from 11 until noon. Listen and move toward your great life today. To admit it's getting better, better, a little better, all the time. If you'd like to get better, call Anne right now. 214 810 8255. 214 810 Talk. Now, more with Ann Beal on 1160 AM KBDT. Welcome back. We've had a lot of interesting responses to our show today. I guess the guys got their video banned, and uh, anyway, we have a lot of great responses. And so, anyway, we were talking about the immunology and how you build your immune system. We were looking, listening to the two doctors in Bakersfield that did their press conference from their front line, administering 5,000 coronavirus tests and um, really urging for reopening because of people's immune systems. Mm -hmm. So let's go on with that. 
been asked to do, I'm following the science. This data is generated by the CDC, World Health Organization. The testing is generated by what we have done here. So we are following the science. Now I want to talk about the immune system. Uh, Dr. Masihi used to teach for immunology. We both had years of microbiology, biochemistry, and virology studies. We've made it our life's work to understand this stuff. And here, I'd like to go over some basic things about how the immune system functions so people have a good un understanding. The immune system is built by exposure to antigens, viruses, bacteria. When you're a little child crawling on the ground, putting stuff in your mouth, viruses and bacteria come in, you form an antigen antibody complex, you form IgG, IgM. This is how your immune system is built. You don't take a small child, put them in bubble wrap in a room and say, go have a healthy immune system. This is immunology, microbiology 101. This is not something, this is the basis of what we've known for years. Um, so w what I'm seeing is when you take human beings and you say, go into your house, clean all your counters, why sell them down? You're going to kill 99% of viruses and bacteria. Wear a mask, don't go outside. What does that do to our immune system? Our immune system is used to touching. We share bacteria, staphylococcal, streptococcal bacteria, viruses. We develop an immune response daily to this stuff. When you take that away from me, my immune system drops. As I shelter in place, my immune system drops. You keep me there for months, it drops more. And now I'm at home hand washing vigorously, washing the counters, worried about things that are indeed what I need to survive. Let's follow the science. This is immunology, folks. This is microbiology. This is what we've combined together. We have 40 years of experience in this. This is common sense immunology. So quarantining and social distancing is worse for us, you're saying? It decreases your immune system. You, you can't build an immune system by, if, if someone has a, a reduced immune system, you, you hide them away because they can't build an immune system. If you have a normal functioning immune system, you need interaction. The, the, when a child's in a room, you're in this protected environment. When you come out, you have almost no immune system. You develop that through touching your mouth, touching your eyes, virus, bacteria, virus, bacteria, immune response, IgG, IgM. This is how you build a strong immune system. Do you think people are worrying too much? Of course they are, but that's, that's from media telling them to. I am telling them sheltering in place decreases your immune system. And then as we all come out of shelter in place with a lower immune system and start trading viruses, bacteria, what do you think is going to happen? Disease is going to spike. And then you've got disease spike amongst a hospital system with furloughed doctors and nurses. This is not the combination we want to set up for a healthy society. It doesn't make any sense. So Dr. Gauchi wrong then when he says that COVID-19 is shown to be nearly 10 times deadlier than the flu? Is that true? Initially, initially, maybe that was true. But again, I'm going through the numbers. I'm not saying who's wrong or right. I'm going through the science and through the numbers. And I, like you, have been watching media and studying this for two months, night and day. I go to bed at 2 or 3 in the morning every day. I read after my shift, and I say, what's going on here? I'm not, a, I'm not in an ivory tower. I'm in seeing patients every day, and I'm collecting my own data. I didn't have data two months ago. I just shared my data. 6.5% of all patients we tested are positive. That's actual, unfiltered, non-political data. Okay, actual, unfiltered, non-political data. And, uh, and that's what we're not supposed to share, right? It, it, is, it is data that we need to take into consideration when we're doing all this. You know, I think that if you're going to shelter in place, understand that you gotta do it for a short amount of time. As short as you can, and then get back out. And that's what Texas is doing. But we tried to go hiking at the park, so we knew we needed to go out in the sun and hike and get exercise for our immune system and be healthy. And what happened? Well, we discovered that we couldn't do that because the parks were shut down. All the state parks and um, historical, yeah, sites. historical sites are shut down here. And so we looked around and found a city park that was open. But, and but dentists are open. Well, and that's and, the irrational part of everything. And, and they say because it? it's essential. But still, if you're letting doctors, dentists back in people's mouths, you should let people go to the park, right? And you can, at parks, we were at the park. I mean, it's, it's what, 500 acres? There's more social distance at the park <laughs> than any place yeah. I've seen. And so <laughs> we could social, we, we didn't hardly see anyone. But when you go to Costco or Sam's and you're trying to check out, you're in a line. That's what's so crazy. 
and you social distance. Well, but you're I six guess, feet but, apart, so yeah, I guess you know, that makes feet. a difference. Right? Yeah, but so. at the park, we were like, we didn't see anybody. No, it, it, you really, there was there, there was a ton of distance between us and everybody else yeah. who was there. And so that makes and absolutely... You're in, but you would be in the sun, and this is what concerns me, because I don't, I don't want to, you know, guess about what's going on. But if you're outside right now, and you're at the parks, and you're enjoying life outside, you're in the sun, which is what you need. Plus the sun and the heat kills viruses. Yeah, and uh, I, honestly, and we said, I said this last week, and I think it still it just continues to be true, you know, that our business, the mental health business, and overall the health business, uh, to isolate brings illness, brings, makes you sick. To get out makes you well and healthy and keeps you well. And usually and, you isolate when you are sick. You know, when I got the flu, I was home. I stayed home. I didn't go to work. I didn't want to get people sick. But I also felt like crap, well, so I stayed in. Okay, and, and, and you're right about that. I mean, if you have flu symptoms and so, uh, you know, you've, you've got uh, aches and pains, you've got fever and, uh, and that kind of thing, you feel terrible, then go home and rest. And usually in about, th- you know, three, four days, you'll be well. Uh, you can get some help with that. But overall, your immune system puts itself back together again. If you have COVID symptoms of coughing and uh, di- difficulty breathing, go home, go to bed. But then when you get well, you go back out. Go back out. Yeah, and that's what's so crazy. We've never, ever, ever done this before. And we've talked about that the last few weeks. We've never sheltered in place. It's so strange to me. Um, but I think in the beginning, they were so afraid. Everybody was so afraid. And you listen to all the news things from other countries. So. They followed the model of China and Spain, and maybe that, you know, at the time it seemed like the best thing. But there are countries that did no sheltering in place, and their numbers are really no different than ours. Right. And so it's interesting, and they're no different than the other countries that did shelter in place, and now the COVID's gone. What's going to happen, though, if uh, these people, when these people come out of isolation into a world of uh, bacteria and viruses, uh, then they may get sick. Yes, and that's what we are very aware of. And that's why they say when people go back out, they're going to get sick. Not everyone, of course, because a lot of us have built up a very good immune system. Right. And so we want to talk a little bit about that. Um, the most important thing is to keep your immune system well. Get it, get it well. Get it strong. Okay? And so we know exercise, socializing, even if it's on the phone, okay? Getting with people in some way or another Even if you social distance, standing six feet to 10, you know, whatever, but being around people. Um, We know eating well, we know sleeping well, right? Right. Now, if we think of the kinds of foods, we also suggest supplementing because no matter how well you try to eat, it's very hard to get all your nutrients now because our food has become so kind of corrupted and uh, it has so many little nutrients in it. Like a banana today versus a banana in the 1950s has 70% less nutrients. So we suggest supplementing. And we take an all-in-one by Dr. Joe Wallach, who was nominated for the Nobel Prize in Nutrition. We take the Healthy Start Pack. That is what we take. Mm -hmm. And that has everything you need to keep your immune system up. Now, what is that? That is all your 60 minerals. And that is 14 vitamins, 12 amino acids, 3 essential fatty acids. Okay, and there's a lot in that. But basically to know, fish oil is an essential fatty acid, right? Right. And um, so you want to get all your minerals and vitamins. Now, what's interesting, if you're saying, well, I take a multivitamin every day. Well, multivitamins are just those 14 vitamins. That's if they have all 14, right? But you're not getting the 60 minerals. And without those 60 minerals, you can get diseases. Right. And so, you know, it's our conviction that to, to be to be well and to stay well, yes. you've got to supplement, what, you know, your diet in some right. way with with minerals and vitamins and EFAs. EFAs. And for asthma and lung problems, EFA is one of the best things. So I take three EFAs or essential fatty acids, or you might call it fish oil. Yeah, there's different kinds of oils. There's a, um, evening primrose oil, barrage oil. Most people know fish oil. But if you take that, you need 1000 milligrams three times a day. Three times, to- three, three times. To- That's what I do for my asthma. Okay, for my asthma, and I have, since a kid, I have allergies and asthma. I take three, three, three EFAs that are 1,000 a piece, so that's 3,000 EFAs three times a day. So that's 9,000 9, EFAs. That's what I take. And as long as no, I do that, no my problems. asthma doesn't yeah. bother me. But if I don't, and I cut back, and I, or I run out, and I don't get more, I can start having some trouble. So those are some things we can do. You have sure. any suggestions? Well, you know, I, I think that um, being smart and trying to stay, you know, use the word safe, although that's even a very controversial word it's these okay. days. They mess it up. I want to be able to say, this is what I believe I need. 
and I feel I feel safe, I feel comfortable, I feel well, and this is what I would like to do. And it's like a control system that we have anytime we, we know what to do. Well, right. And so, you know, everybody needs to be able to make up their own mind about, I think, what's good for them and best mm -hmm. for them. Uh, do I want to spread disease? Of course not. I don't want to do that. So when I'm sick, I'll stay away from the public. When I'm well, I'll get out there. And so I think a lot of it's just being smart about yeah, what you smart, do being wise. and not being afraid and not being controlled and, you know, do, doing the best you can to be, be who you are and to do well. Now they are, you know, there are some things that a lot of people know, some people don't know that when you're sick, it's really, you know, if you start feeling really run down, one of the best things you can have is vitamin C, vitamin D, right? Not... <laughs> and so vitamin D is actually in place if you're not getting out in the sun. If you're getting a lot of sun, you don't necessarily have to supplement with vitamin D. But, you know, they have vitamins. And so, you know, if you drink orange juice, but even if you have oranges, but vitamin C itself does help. There are things that help boost your immune system. And so you want to work on that. If you're sheltering in place, okay, you want to boost your immune system as much as you can while you're in there. Right. And it, it's a well-known fact in medical, just in the medical science end of things that vitamin C boosts the immune system no matter what you've heard people say on it tv or on youtube or whatever it is a good immune system booster I, and that's why mm -hmm. that's why people use it that's why docs use that with their patients well and you know they're saying that people say it cures things we're not saying that we're saying it boosts your immune system and you want to boost your immune system and also we there's beta glucan which is um a natural immune boosting right um from it is from mushrooms right uh, they get it from different places, but beta glucan, we actually take RVB 500 and RYL 300. It may be backwards, RYL 500, RVB 300. That's what we take. 300 if you're not sick, 500 if you're sick. We add that in to boost our immune system. And so, you know, for us it works. And I think that you find different ways to stay well. For us, we, we do that. That's how we stay well. We hardly ever have to go to the doctor. But, you know, there is um, different books you can read on boosting your immune system. Um, and you can always Google it, how to boost your immune system. And that is what you want to do. Actually, it's good to me that people have been going out to the stores, going out, driving through, because that bacteria is helping them stay well. Actually, it is. Yes. And that, that's what a lot of people don't understand. Yeah. So they have been getting out. Most people have been getting out. They just haven't been doing a lot of what they would normally do. But they have been going to the grocery store, going out for the necessities. And so at least they're getting that. They haven't completely stayed home. If you have completely stayed home, then you've got to really do a lot of natural stuff to boost your immune system. And that's what we would suggest you mm -hmm. do. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and so for us, with these doctors to hear data and the actual data they've collected and they hear their opinions about for them with their clients and every all their patients and what they've learned I, I i don't have a problem listening to that any data that i can get and any more information i can get that is helpful for me now what i do with that information i will use my own wisdom and disseminate what i need and what i don't need and that is what we were taught to do yeah, and in yeah. our country that is what we do <laughs> you make your own choices yeah yes you can so right. someone who shuts you down because oh that's you have a difference of opinion. I'm not going to listen to you. I'm not going to take in any of your data when I already have fixed my opinion from listening to the media or whatever. I don't want to hear data. I don't even want to hear any facts because they go against anything that I believe. That's a pretty sad place to be. And if you listen and or you read the book 1984, what's the other books? Uh, Atlas I'm, Shrugged, I, Atlas Rand, Shrugged uh, Anthem. Anthem, any of those books. What's crazy about that, because I read those back in the 80s, right? And so people are sounding like that. Well, that's actually, those uh, narratives are actually taking place today. And if Jerry knew, if he knew how much he sounds like that and how far he's, you know, and I know he's in a state where the media is just so crazy there. So I don't take it personally. I understand that he listens to that media all the time. And it's, you know, they do say crazy things on there. It makes them hate Texans. It makes them hate everything <laughs> right. that's any even a little, a little bit old-fashioned or what we used to be when we were founded as a country, especially even the Constitution. And so for us, we want you to know the data. We bring you information from different experts and let you decide. We're not forcing it on you. So when we come back, we're going to give you a little more of what to do to help you stay well when you get back out there soon. <laughs> <laughs> and we, you know, we, 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 <laughs> you're cracking me up. You always worry. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> I wanted to get in at least a little bit of that when I was, yeah. And we knew before we did this show that there were going to be people who wouldn't agree with us. And I never thought of somebody not following you because <laughs> you disagreed with them. Well, my but, sister's getting pressured to not follow any of the people that well, disagree that. with her. Yeah, and I've seen that. it on her Facebook. They're well, see, pressuring you, her. You need to unfriend all these people who disagree with you. I mean, and my knew, sister says, you know, I want Jerry's yeah. name on there because we knew he didn't believe in a lot of the things that we're committed to. He's, you know? I don't think he believes in anything that we do. I don't. Think and so, so I think either. he saw that and he's given his opinion because well, right. it's a negative exactly. opinion. But I, I know that. Yeah. I know that Jerry believes none of that. Yeah. I, I know that. Well, and, and he's so, free. He's free to do that. You know, and I know. I don't call him up. And, and I wanted to go complain, surprise, you know? surprise, surprise. Right. Uh, you know, that's like those Democrats calling into Rush Limbaugh or whatever that totally <laughs> disagree right. with him. Right. And he knows that. Um, so what else do we need want to talk about here? Um, do we want to leave with some key points? I mean, we, um, yeah, you do it. I'll let you do it. Hi, Ron. We're going to say hi to everybody. everybody Anita, hi, my, Anita. Hi, Anita. Yeah. Yeah, there's hey everybody. Guys. Yeah, for everybody on uh, on Facebook who's listening in here on the break, uh, uh, Ron, we, we're just encouraging everybody we know to go dig in the dirt. Go dig it. He does. <laughs> he digs in the dirt. That's what you are. <laughs> so, again, Ron Neitzel's the green wizard. Yes, he And he, he wants you to be gardening and working in your yards and getting out in the sun. Yes, working in the dirt. That soil yeah. actually strengthens your immune system getting in the dirt. Like right. kids. Just being, being outside and working in your yard and, and all that kind of thing. There's a, a spiritual connection with that. Go ahead, man. Well, I don't know. I was just going, I was just thinking again that uh, if uh, there are people out there who are listening to the show today who haven't heard uh, Dan Erickson and Arta Masita, the, Masi, he, he, sorry, the, uh, interview that they did uh, they you really need to go find that and look it up because it's it kind of puts it together in a way that's uh that's very easy to follow you guys are are uh very experienced and they they are very articulate they come off and they help you understand you know what's really going on millions of cases small amount of death and i think that's one of the most important things to remember um, isolation creates illness getting out creates wellness and um don't be deceived by what you hear and read and see in the mainstream media. Sometimes we don't always hear the right thing, the truth from them. Uh, be your own person and, and read through information that you hear about and receive and make up some of your, you know, make your own mind up about what's safe for you and what you can do and what you can't. It bothers me a little bit about what's going on in Gallup, New Mexico. Um, and I, you know, we don't know every detail about all that because we're distanced from them by states and all. But um, apparently, they really uh, shut down the city. And, I can't even uh, believe it. I, I don't know if it's, people can't get out or get in or whatever, the, however that is. But anytime that kind of thing happens, uh, it's way too political for me. And and uh, it, I suspect most everybody in that city feels like their rights are being uh, walked on. To admit it's getting better, better, a little better, all the time. You're getting better all the time. Now back to Ann Beal on 1160 AM KBDT. Wow, we've had such a good time talking about this. Uh, I need to let Ash in. I don't understand. They're trying to give me information from signs. <laughs> I don't get it. Ash, Ash, uh, I don't know. I don't know. She, she wants us to make sure that we get out of here in time. Oh, okay. Don't worry person. about that. Oh, yeah. my gosh. She's trying to make sure that I'm on time. Okay, cool. <laughs> well, you guys, we've had fun with this data, and we've had fun with all the comments, and everyone, everyone has been really wonderfully receptive, and we only had one person not be receptive and that's kind of the way it is most of the time of course we live in texas but we have people respond from all over and um i've had some really good texts i've had good mentions on instagram and on facebook 
And um, we didn't have time for any calls because we had all this information we needed to get. So now you were talking about New Mexico and, and what they're, they're cutting off people they're from getting in and out of towns. I mean, New well, Mexico's really locked down. Yeah, that's what it sounded like. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I mean, you know, Gallup's the only city or town that I've heard of that's done that. But uh, it's almost like they've created an internment camp out of their own city. That's yes. pretty scary to me. I think it's terrifying. And, and you know, my, my dad's given up trying to sell his RV, so he's just going to give it to us because he can't ever sell it. Nobody can come look at it. He's been trying to do stuff for two months. Well, we may not be able and to. And so I, would, I wonder I if we can even get there to get it. I'm like, I don't know that I'll be able to get it. Um, but, yeah, that's pretty scary. I, I was so just frustrated and sad that we couldn't get to the park. And yeah. that's just till next week, I guess. They're going to open that up maybe the 15th. I don't, I don't know. know. We have sooner. our favorite park that's we close to park. us. And then it's just so the we look for parks. another one. Yeah. yeah. But. So city parks are open. So we went to a city park. And that's what's so insane. But hey, whatever. At least we do whatever we can. And no matter where you are and no matter what's available, you got to find something. Even if you just go out in your backyard, exercise in your backyard, get out in the sun, anything like that. Walk your neighborhood, anything that you can do. Yeah. And, and, you know, we're not asking you to break the law or anything Absolutely like not. that, okay? Mm -hmm. We would never do that. But what we are encouraging to do, if you to do is to do everything in your power to get out, expose yourself to sun, sunshine, enjoy being outside, exercise, do the things that you know ordinarily are good for you, and realize that, you know, hiding at home is, is not going to be the most healthy thing for you. Getting out is going to be a healthy thing for you. Don't be foolish. And expose yourself needlessly to people who are sick. We're not right. we're saying hey, that would be a crazy thing to do. But get out as much as you can because that's going to help keep you well. Well, and, it, you know, it's interesting. I was going to play the clip of the doctors talking about that in the hospitals and all their other ER doctors, all the people they know, they're at being asked to pad those numbers for COVID. Well, you know, that's a sad thing, and they are. Uh, the, the, and this is not just one guy, one doc saying this. It's a lot of doctors saying, you know, because we get extra money if right. – uh, if the, the uh, cause of death on the death certificate is COVID. Uh, I'm being pressured to pad my numbers and to Add include it. COVID as a part of the death uh, certificate yes, narrative. Yes, and um, I just want to play a little bit of that. Let's do that real quick. Okay. just suggest that you go find this video and listen to it um, you will be so glad you did there's so much more information and it's long it's an hour press conference so we can only do a little bit but um, I found it um, on TV 23 ABC Bakersfield doctors is how I looked it up mm -hmm. and um, you can't find it on YouTube now because they took it down so you know, being able to find it. I also went to the blaze. I mean, just trying to find someone because a lot of the places that actually showed the video, you can't even get the video. It's there. You try to play it and it won't play. And so Google sent a real, real number as well, trying to take it down. And um, it's very fascinating that even that they're doing that. But you know what happens when something's banned? It always makes it more exciting to I go listen to. to find it, right? Yeah. So Dr. Erickson's video is so good, and I would suggest you guys go find that, listen to it, get the data yourself. And remember, like, part of it is to just build your immune system. You guys are doing smart things already. And um, when you get back out there, just you can keep doing those things, but get outside. Get outside, see people, and keep doing what you're doing. Yeah, I was going to say, too, uh, don't let anybody pressure you, coerce you, make you afraid to the extent that you freeze and they're just frozen in, a pl in place, okay? Do something, think clearly. Uh, use every uh, opportunity you have to get different ideas about whatever it is, including coronavirus. And uh, Just don't and, be afraid. Yeah, don't, and I don't think be that afraid. being wise is so important. Just don't be afraid and get healthy, stay healthy, and boost that immune system. Everything that you can do, that is more important than anything else that you do. But I think everything you do, and it'll help you get better, better, and better.